Blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle, and Jesus Christ is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Well, how's your journey going, friend? Is it an adventure, or are you bogged down? Are you enjoying the thrill of the mountaintop experience? Are you resting in the peaceful tranquility of the valleys, or do you find yourself in the quicksand of life? Well, I pray that you are on top of the mountain, that your heart is singing and rejoicing to the great God and Savior whom you serve, that as you look out across the the world as we know it, that you see it clearly for the reality that it is, that you can see behind the scenes and discern that there is a puppet master pulling the strings, that you're not easily fooled or beguiled or tricked, or even lured into his snares, but that you can ascend above all of that, lift your hands and sing hallelujah, and bow with the chorus of heaven as you sing praises to our great God and King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, friends, today is February the 25th of the year 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text today is going to be taken out of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. But in order to understand verse 1, we must back up and pick up in verse 17 of chapter 6, realizing that when this letter was originally written, there were no chapters and there were no verses. So it was a long progression of thought, just as any letter would be. And so we pick up in verse 16, and he says, What agreement has the temple of God with idols? You are the temple of God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk in them, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So a series of sermons could be preached from that single text. But what I want you to take notice of is that we are the temple of God and we are to have no fellowship with idols. So we must ask ourselves, what are idols? Well, one would clearly say idols are the things that we worship. But could idols not be also the things that we give our time to, the things that we give our attention to, and the things that steal our time and our attention from the Most High? Could not those be idols? Well, let's continue to read. Verse 17, Wherefore, because of this, because of the fact that you are a temple of the living God, he walks in you and he dwells in you. Because of this fact, I want you to come out from among them. Well, who is them? Look at verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Come out from among the unbelievers. Be separate in your lifestyle, in your choices, in your decisions, saith the Lord, and do not touch the unclean thing. What is the unclean thing? The thing that belongs on the side of the unbelievers, the things that the unbelievers spend their time doing. And he says, when you do this, I will receive you. But there are conditions to your acceptance. Look at verse 18. Then I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. When will he be a father to us? When will we be his sons and daughters? When we come out from among them, when we leave their side and we stand on the side of God. You see, we should know by now that we can't have a foot in both sides. We have to choose sides. And so we come out from among them, we separate ourselves, we touch not the unclean thing. What is the unclean thing? Friends, that is a serious question. Most people would choose the larger evils, and they would be right. But the unclean thing is also the minor evils. The things that we think are insignificant, those, my friend, are the unclean thing as well. So in your journey, in your adventure with the Most High, you must consider these things. Take them before your God and your King and ask His opinion on these things. But now look at verse 1 of chapter 7 because this is our text. And this is where I want to spend the remainder of our time this morning. Having therefore these promises. What promises? That if you will come out from among them, 
I will be a father to you. You will be my sons and daughters. I will receive you into my fellowship. I will receive you into my family. That's what he says. Having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Now watch this. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. So not only can you dirty yourself by the acts of the flesh, you can dirty yourself by the acts of the spirit. What did Jesus say? He says, you don't physically have to commit adultery against your neighbor. If you do it in your spirit, you're guilty of it. So let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I asked you yesterday, what have you done today? What will you do today? that will be a new sacrifice for you that will cause your flesh much pain and discomfort because every day we're supposed to be perfecting the act of holiness in our lives. And the act of holiness is simply separation, separating ourselves from this world, coming out from among them, touching not the unclean thing. What are you going to do today? And what are you sorry that you didn't do yesterday But what will you do today in perfecting holiness? Will you spend more time in the word of God? Will you spend more time in fellowship? Will you spend more time meditating on the things that are important to him, his kingdom, his rule, his work in this earth? Will you spend more time in prayer for your leaders? Will you spend more time in prayer for this ministry? Will you spend more time in prayer and consideration for your own walk, your own journey with the most high? Will you spend more time loving the unlovable? Will you spend more time meeting the needs of those who can't meet the needs for themselves? Will you spend more time on others than on yourself? These are all questions that are necessary and need to be asked in perfecting holiness. So let's read our text again, friend, and we'll close here. Therefore, having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the love of God. Is that what it says? No, it says perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We obey God because we fear God. Remember what Job told us in verse 28 of chapter 28? And unto the man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And depart from evil is understanding. Remember how Ecclesiastes says it in verse 13 of chapter 12? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So again, one more time, our text, friends. Therefore, having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I pray that on your journey today, friends, on your adventure, as you experience the mountain, as you take rest in the valley, as you sit beside still waters and consider the things of your God and your King, I pray today, friends, that you will consider new ways and new opportunities to perfect holiness in the fear and adoration and the majestic discipline under your God and King. Now, may he bless you and keep you. May he walk near to you today and may he whisper sweet loving things in your ear as you strive to walk so faithfully before him. I love you. I lift you up to the Father each day. I pray that you'll do the same for us. If you would like more challenging words, please visit us on our YouTube ministry, which is Haya Kadosh Ministries. And there we have over 100 teaching videos to help you in your walk, in your journey, and in your adventure. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I'll see you on the next video.